All right, you fearless leaders, let's kick it off with our good run through Baldur's Gate with Good Luther. I looked at the rules here, and I think we're going to be going with hard. Now, we could just go with the core rules, or frankly, even normal, but I figure hard will give us enough challenge to make things interesting while still being easy enough that we're not just getting stuck on monsters every the cliffs, three seconds. From the Sword Coast, the Citadel of Candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of Farron. It is an imposing fortress, kept in strict isolation from the intrigues that occasionally plague the rest of the Forgotten Realms. It is secluded, highly regimented, and it is home. Within these hallowed halls of knowledge, your story begins. You have spent most of your twenty years of life within this keep's austere walls, under the tutelage of the sage Gorion. Acting as your father, he has raised you on a thousand tales of heroes and monsters, lovers and infidels, battles and tragedies. However, one story was always left untold, that of your true heritage. You have been told that you are an orphan, but your past is largely unknown. Lately, Gorion has been growing distant from you, as if some grave matter weighs heavily on his heart. You have asked about his concerns as gently as possible, but your queries have been in vain. Your sole comfort is the knowledge that he is a wise man, and you know he will tell you when the time is right. Nonetheless, his silence is troubling, and you cannot help but feel that something is terribly wrong. Today, Gorion has appeared more agitated than ever, and now he has uncharacteristically interrupted your chores in the middle of the day. Imparting hurried instructions for you to equip yourself for travel, he has handed you what gold he can spare, but given no clue as to why. Nevertheless, you now stand before the Candlekeep Inn, ready to purchase what you need for an unplanned and unexpected journey. All right. Well, there's the opening that I'm sure we are all very familiar with. However, we now find ourselves in front of Candlekeep, preparing for the preparation that we life, can't even sure. know what it is. And of course, we have the beautiful voice of Luther of Gladstone, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Luther, gotta say something. Luther! What the heck? Anyway. Alright, so we're good Luther, which means we intend to follow Gorion's instructions. An unexpected request, but sure. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. Enter Winthrop, a local innkeeper. Well, hello there, young one. Come to visit your old pal Winthrop, have ye? Well, don't forget the 10,000 gold piece entrance fee, as per Candlekeep's custom, don't you know? Alright, so in order to facilitate the large amount of text that's going to be needing to be read as we play the game. I don't know if you've already noticed, but we're going to be doing this Let's Play a little different than the one from 11 years ago. We're actually going to attempt to read most of the dialogue. Hideous, no. But, uh, at times, I may scan the text, read very quickly which one Good Luther would likely say, and then respond by reading it out loud for your benefit. This is so that you don't have to listen to me reading all of the responses, and it might maintain some semblance of cohesion in the dialogue itself for you, the listener. So, we'll go with... And in... Unfo also, unfortunately, I probably will never be able to do Luther's voice, but we will attempt it at least. You always were the big kidder, Winthrop. Like, it's funnier nearly every time I hear it. Well, perhaps not quite so often. Ha! Ah, I was just having a bit of fun with ye, my friend. The monks may be walking around with poles in their nethers, but you know you are always welcome here in my sight. Ryan did well by you, he did. So, is there anything I can do for you? Some drinks, a room to sleep, or anything to buy? Yeah, sure. What do you have? Alright, so... Let's see if we can outfit... Good old Luther. Well, we're good. And everyone knows only evil people choose black colored gear. Clearly, we'll have to go with the wooden shield. Anyway, we'll pick up a large shield here. 
got quite a bit of starting gold. We rolled a little high. Fighters do tend to get the larger amount of starting gold comparative to the other classes, but we even have enough right off the bat for some split mail if we want it. So we'll buy a shield and some splint mail. We really need a... Pardon me. We really need a sword of some kind. Unfortunately, we do not have the gold to buy it. And this quarterstaff is doing us no good. We'll go ahead and just pitch it on the ground. Well, we don't want to litter, do we? We'll find some other secure place to... Keep it. Hard to find decent folk nowadays. Firebead Elven Hair. Ah yes, I'm back within the hallowed halls of Candlekeep. With this iron crisis above upon us, the trip from Bergos was more hazardous than I care to relate. You're Garion's ward, aren't you? My, you have come into your own, if you would permit an old man jealous of youth to say so. Hmm. I left an identify scroll with Tethtoral in the inner grounds. He should be done examining it by now, so if you could fetch it for me, I'd be grateful. Well, what the heck? Being the brown nosing good l I gotta stop saying that. Alright, guys. I think you already know the shtick. We are going to attempt to interact with work, everything sure. in a positive way, so of course we will help the old man out. We just need to find Teth Toral. I think I saw him escape into the shadow of. The fog of war right here. Firebead has sent you to me, hasn't he? Very well. Return the scroll to him. But then you must hurry and speak with Gorion. He is waiting for you in the steps of the central library. I assure you, child, it is a matter of greatest urgency. Alright, well, we got the scroll, so we'll just bop back on over to Elven Hair Firebead. <laughs> That's not his name. Uh, and give him the scroll. That might work. It's hard to find decent folk nowadays. Ah, I'm glad to see that age is not hard in your heart towards such an old man as myself. I'll take all of your identify scrolls. I have great use for those types of scrolls. Here, allow me to cast a little spell on you. It will protect you from any evil you might meet tonight. Of course, he's lying. The duration of this spell will sure. in no way be long enough to meet the needs of a knightly jaunt out into the world, but what have you. We are good again, and I know I said I wasn't going to keep saying that, so I'm sorry, but I do need to point out that since we are attempting to roleplay a good character, we will not be looting freely like we normally would if we were just playing the game mechanically. Obviously, there are items littered about this inn that we could go out and just blatantly steal, and unfortunately, this is sort of a fault of Baldur's Gate. Typically, there is, especially in the first game, no penalty whatsoever for just robbing people blind. It definitely gets better by the time Baldur's Gate 2 rolls around, but we're going to honor, even, honor our goodness, even though there would be no repercussions whatsoever for taking things. No time to chit-chat. Step up to the heat, young one. You'll need a good fire to warm the chill stairs of those monks. Most inhospitable th they are. Isn't that right, lovey? Oh yes, darling. They're most standoffish. Uh, they lead a somewhat cloistered life here, so they are unaccustomed to many visitors. You are perhaps a bit, well, colorful compared to what they are used to. Colorful, dear? Perhaps we should dress a little more plainly to fit in. It's it's worth a try, my dear. I'll, I can't remember what voice we were doing for the nobleman. Um, it's Oh, I remember that. It's worth a try, my dear, although our clothes may only be ha half of it. They certainly couldn't react any worse than they have. I thank you for your suggestion, Luther of Gladstone, and for putting it so tactfully. Good eve to you. <laughs> Sorry, this is the first time I'm going to be bopping around to different voices this quickly. It's going to take me a little while to get used to. That might work. Well, there's no real need to go up into the, what the heck? resting place of the inn, so we'll stay away from that location. What the heck? Firebead cast a spell of protection on us. Did he actually give us that potion? Yes, and he gave us a potion of healing, so that's nice. Hello there. 
Oh, hello. Hey, have you seen my copy of the History of Halurua anywhere? You know how I can't stand this constant shuffling of arithric arthritic feet up in the library, so I thought I'd get a bit of fresh air and just east of here, and uh, I hate being so absent-minded. Please, if you find it, I really do need it back. All right, east of here. Well, we will go help Flidia, Flidia look for her book. Now, perhaps it's in this building. An unexpected oh. request, but sure. Oh, goody, goody. I've gone and found ye first. You are the ward of Garion, no doubt. I am. What can I do for you? Oh, our encounter shall be quite simple for you. Plainly put, I have made it my mission to end your life. Success will mean a little respect among my peers. So, you see, you can do very little except die. Oh, no. We, uh, we actually don't have a weapon that can damage this guy. Um, actually... All right. Well, there's a um, there's a war hammer in a nearby chest. Seems like a good, good thing to grab and defend ourselves. In spite of the fact that we're not skilled with war hammers whatsoever, we are a fighter and quickly dispatch the aforementioned Shank, who has attempted to kill us for no other reason other than we were the Garion's ward. Oh, apparently we did have the quarter staff. Oh well, that's fine. We'll go ahead and uh, put this hammer back where we found it. Hopefully its original owner won't mind the blood that's now on it. That might work. Oop, we got a monk talking to us. Luther of Gladstone, you cut yourself above the brow there. What is wrong, my child? Something in your eye tells me that something is very wrong indeed. Oh, Parda. There was a man in there. He smelled like the stables and he... he tried to kill me. It was horrible. Hurry then, child, equip yourself at the inn, and go join Gorion on the steps of the library. I had a sense something like this might happen. What the heck? Well, we didn't find Fildia's book. Flidia, Flidia. Maybe this guy knows where it is. Dreppin. What do you need? Fildia left one of her books in here again. It's in the hay. There, beside the cow. If you run it... If you could run it over to her and then come back, I've got some plans for you. Well, uh, plans... Anyway, we'll grab Flidia's book and jaunt back over to her. I'm sure she'll be overjoyed that her library late fees will not gain any more penalties. That was a really weird way of saying that. Hello there. My book! Oh, you remind me of Garion when you grin like that. Raising you has been hard on him, I know. But he says it's a toil of love. A toil of destiny, even. He must be a very special child indeed. To draw such praise from a man of his silent nature. Here, take this little gem of mine. Maybe Winthrop will give you a little something for it. Alright, so Flidia... <laughs> I really wish I knew how to pronounce her name. Flidia. We're gonna go with Flidia. Flidia gave us a Lynx Eye Gem. So we will indeed go and sell that to Winthrop. Hopefully earning enough money to purchase an actual weapon. But sure. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. As an elven arse. Indeed. Winthrop, buddy, are we friends? You, We really need a good sword. A long sword, preferably. Unfortunately, you're selling your long swords for 22 gold, and we only have 12. Well, back to the drawing board. I suppose we're going to need to do some more request, chores. But sure. Uh, Dreppin did say he had further plans for us, so maybe he has something for us to do. Eventually. Hey, look, we don't walk as slow as we did in Aiden Chronicles, at least. What do you need? Nice day, isn't it? Too bad Nessa here ain't enjoying it, though. Her being sick and all. I need to get here one of those potions from, uh, antidote potions off Hull. He stayed up drinking last night and got hauled out of bed to man the gates early this morning. So I bet he's got a few of them lying around somewhere. Alright, so the cow is sick. We need to go find Hull and uh, obtain an antidote from him. Unfortunately, that didn't put any gold in our pockets, though. We'll have to look elsewhere for a sword. By Moradin's hammer! I thought I asked you to clean out the rats of this building yesterday already. Hop to it! Get in there! <clears throat> well, 
clean out the rats we shall. We will need a quarter staff for this one, but that's alright. It shouldn't really matter too much. We shall fight the rats to the bitter end. Now, while we watch our characters slowly Here take out nothing. these uh, rodents, Something of note that I find somewhat interesting is that down here in the HUD, you'll notice that it depicts the rats as resisting a very large part of the damage we're dealing. Look at this. Eight damage resisted, nine damage resisted. It's fascinating. I don't know why that happens, but apparently rats re resist a lot of damage. Oh, did we not kill them all? Must have missed one. Ah, here we go. How did this happen? <laughs> so that must be the uh, Luther critical hit, or uh, sorry, critical miss sound effect. Oh, All right, that should be it. Ah, yes, kill them like the rats they are. A glorious battle unlike any this world has ever seen. Here's five gold pieces. Don't spend it all in one place. Well, fancy. Fancy, fancy, but that's still not putting us up to 22. We're still at 17. What the heck? Well, maybe we'll run into Hull. He was guarding the gates, after all. Hey, kid. Ugh. I woke up late this morning and left my sword in the barracks before going on duty. If you want to get it for me, it's in the chest at the foot of my bed on the right side of the barracks. Quick now, before the gate warden catches me without it. You also find an antidote in there. I think Drepin needs one for old Nessa. Alright, well, to the barracks. To find Hull's sword in addition to the antidote that Drepin was asking oh, for. Oh, who's talking to us? Oh, this guy. Soon be gone, will ye? I, Garion, asked me to teach you a wit about the finer arts of mass combat afore ye leave. Can I pique your interest with it, Luther of Gladstone? Uh, Garion's in a hurry. Uh, oh, right, Luther voice. Garion's in a hurry, Great Warden. And I'm afraid I can't spare the time. Sorry. Are ye sure, little one? It would be best if ye took the time to learn it now rather than curse your ignorance later. Garion asked himself asked me to do this deed, and I'll not offer it to ye twice. Very well then. Teach me what you can teach me what you can, for I have much to learn. Good then, child, tis one thing to maintain control of yourself in the heat of battle, but tis quite another to maintain one's authority or a group. I've asked Obey, the illusionist, to run through a few simulations for ye down in the storage cellars. Just follow me this way and I'll unlock the door for ye. Alright, well, let's get some training. Luther of Gladstone, the gate warden asked me to prepare a little going away party for you. A bit of a mass combat practice is in order, I believe. Well, we'll make it real simple for you. Candorus, Mordain, Arcanus, Dater, and Osprey are all going to join your party. You'll have to complete you'll have complete control over them, same as you will with anyone else who might want to join you in your coming travels. Once they've all joined your party, I'm going to summon several illusions illusions of common monsters you might encounter outside the safety of this keep. These illusions will attack the party, and it will be up to you to issue necessary orders to dispose of them. Remember, though, these creatures are illusions, and they won't be able to hurt you. Try your best to kill them, however, because in the real world, pain, harm, and even death are far more real. Some of your comrades will have ma- Okay, we'll just, um, skip that, because it's mostly just tutorial data, but we'll go ahead and have a quick, quick little jaunt here, and, uh, figure out really quickly what these characters are. It looks like we have a fighter, a cleric, who knows Bless. We'll definitely want to pull that out. What are you? Hold on, what's this character? Oh, this character is multi-class. Cleric Mage. Very good combination. Very fun to play. Ah, I see. So we have fighter, cleric, cleric mage, fighter, and the heck is an invoker? Who plays as an invoker? Anyway, most of these guys are fighters, so we'll put the fighters up front. Uh, we'll grab everyone else, we'll pull our mages and clerics and what have you in the back. What is this guy again? He is a... also a cleric. A lot of spellcasters here. And of course, Luther himself will jump in front and join the fray. Oh, whoa, 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 we have AI, AI on. We want AI off. We do not want party AI. People doing things on their own is generally a bad idea. Anyway, let's throw out our bless spell here and continue to fun. Oh, that was easy, wasn't it? 
Is there anything in this chest? No, the chest is locked. Have ye had enough? If you're ready to go, I'll teleport you back outside. Otherwise, you better be ready for some more fighting. Uh, let's see here. I think I've had enough. Just take me outside. Okay, then. Once I teleport you outside, you're not going to be able to come back in here again. This is for your own protection, as the illusions can I, can, I use can sometimes be dangerous. Well, that was fancy and free for a hot second. An unexpected request, All right, let's but sure. continue on. To the barracks, I believe. <laughs> there was so much action, and now there's this peaceful quiet. Double guards, a sign that says barracks. This must be it. What the heck? Well, maybe this guy knows where Hull's chest is. Ugh, what a mead-filled night. That hole is just too much. Poor Sap had to go man the gate this morning, too. I don't know how he does it. What can I do for you, anyway? Yeah, uh, the mead would explain why Hull forgot his sword on the... S forgot to put his sword on this morning. He sent me to go fetch it for him. Sure, sure. Should be in the chest over against the wall right there. Alright, well, we'll take a look. Indeed, Hull sword and antidote for Drepin. What the heck? And now the long walk back to the main gates, but that's fine. So far, things seem to be normal, don't they? We've had only one person try to take claim on our life. An interesting concept. All for the respect of his peers. He didn't even say he did it for gold, did he? Mm. Ugh, took your sweet time, didn't you? Ryan's a fool for trying to bring you up right, and you can tell him I said so, too. If I didn't know any better, I'd say this whole iron crisis is the result of twerps like you wandering around with people's swords. Here's ten pe gold pieces. Now get out of here, I'm on duty. Mm. Shh, kid, I'm on duty. So, yes, Hull, the ever uh, <laughs> pronounced hero of the Guardian of the Gate of Candlekeep, throws you under the bus in order to make it look like you ran off with his sword. Of course, I'm sure he appreciates you bringing his weapon of choice back to him. However, it would have been nice if we could have kept it, because then we could have had a long sword. What but the heck? he did give us ten gold pieces, so we now have the requisite amount of gold in order to um, buy a long sword. Drepin will get his what antidote. <laughs> You're a wonder you are. Stick with me and we'll go far. Well, okay, stick with me and we'd probably never leave the walls of Candlekeep, would we? They say the bandits out there aren't after gold and gems anymore, but just plain old iron. It's one of them whatchamacallits, paradoxes, or whatever. It's dangerous. So you want to wear some good solid plate and carry an axe that'd make Tempest jealous. But rather than protecting you, it just makes everyone want a piece of you, right? Given my druthers, I guess I'd rather stay right here. So, Drepin gives us the interesting information that people outside the walls of Candlekeep are more interested not in the gold pieces that travelers are carrying, but uh, actually interested in the armor and weapons they carry. With an iron crisis about, iron is worth more now than gold is. Luckily though, the inflated prices don't an seem to have hit request? Winthrop's but store sure. yet, as he's willing to sell a simple I iron longsword for, uh, well, 22 gold. Which admittedly is a lot of money probably for a common person, but apparently we're loaded. Finally, a longsword. I wish we could buy two of them, considering that, uh, well, the iron crisis is caused by a malfunction of heck? most of the iron in the area, uh, which also creates an uh, issue with breaking weapons. We have several monks here that are all chanting. I don't think they have anything important to say, unfortunately. Interestingly enough, in the original Boulder's Gate, those guys would just chant constantly, but they removed that feature in Enhanced Edition, probably because it was very loud and sort of annoying. Hey, uh, it's me, Emowyn. Oh no, here we go. Ha! I'm surprised that stuffy old Garion let you away from your studies and chores. That old fiddle-faddle. I snuck off too. Old Puff Guts Winthrop was looking for me, but I've got all day to do his chores. You have time for a story today? No, I can tell you don't. What have you been up to? 
I'm afraid I cannot chat today, little one. My foster father wishes me to prepare for a journey, but will not say where. Little one? I'm not much younger than you. Though you sure got tall fast. Relatively, anyway. Journey, eh? I never get to travel. Wish I could go with you. Yep, really wish I could. Yes, sir, really do. Alright, alright, I get the message. I'll ask if you can go with us. Oh, don't be silly. Ryan would never even let you finish the sentence, especially after what that letter said. It, uh, did I say that? No, of course I didn't. Never saw no letter. Nope. I'll just get back to work now. You had better go. Grian is waiting. Oh, my child. Enter Grian. Glad I have found you. This is very unnerving. I know, but you must trust me. It is very important that you pack your possessions so that we may leave Candlekeep immediately. Hurry, for there is no time to tarry. The keep is well protected, but not invulnerable. What could possibly harm us here? This place is a fortress and guarded beyond measure. Candlekeep is indeed a formidable obstacle for ne'er-do-wells, but it is not insurmountable. No matter how thick the mesh, at least one mosquito always finds its way through. No, my child, we must leave as soon as possible, for our safety and that of our friends here. Well, what should I bring with me on this journey? If you would just give me some sort of clue as to what I will need. My dear child, you should know yourself well enough to purchase the gear you need. I have given you what I can spare, so hurry off to the inn and speak with Winthrop. Use your skills as a reference, and buy what basics you must, though spend wisely. His prices are fair, but you may not have enough gold to purchase all that you want. Please, father, tell me where we will be going. Alas, I cannot, for I have not truly decided yet. All that is certain is that we will be far safer on the move. Perhaps the woods might offer some secluded security, or perhaps the city of Baldur's Gate would offer cover amidst its teeming throngs of people. I do not know where we shall end up, but I have a few friends here and there. Hmm. I will think on this. I am ready to go now. Listen carefully. If we ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the Friendly Arm Inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. <laughs> it is unfortunate that I cannot do a very good J Jim Cummings impersonation. Let's hurry, child. The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry. I'll explain everything as soon as there is time. Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. Prepare yourself. You're perceptive for an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. You're a fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and you and your lackeys will be unhurt. I'm sorry that you feel that way, old man. I will not make this contest Well, you know, for a moment there, it seemed like Ryan was going to win. This morning, you awake with the realization that you have not been living some horrible dream. Ambushed, you saw Gorion cut down before your eyes, and even his powerful magic could not stop the onslaught. It was his wish that you flee, but that does not remove the feeling of helplessness that now overwhelms you. Hand over your ward, the armored fiend had said. He was after you and you alone, but why? If only Gorion had given some clue, but now you are alone and lost. Candlekeep is near, but you will find no quarter there. The readers pay for their serenity with rather draconian entry rules, and without Gorion's influence, their doors will remain closed. You will not last long on your own with your meager equipment. Perhaps you can get some help from the friends Gorion mentioned, the ones at the Friendly Arm. 
me, Emmowen. An unexpected request, but sure. Sorry, I followed you, but I never got out of Candlekeep, and those monks are such a bore. Never any decent coin in their pockets, neither. I... I saw Garion, and I am so sorry. Kinda of figured something bad might happen to you out here. How could you have known? Garion did not even tell me himself. I, uh, accidentally read a letter on his desk the other day. Can't remember exactly what it said, but he might still have a... It might be on his... body. Anyway, I'm not gonna let you wander around out here alone. Never let a friend down, no sir. Stick with you until you say otherwise, I will. What the well, heck? We've left Candlekeep, and a mysterious figure has killed our foster father. Not even his radical magic could have saved him. Ignoring all danger and the fact that the figure that tried to kill us might still be here, we shall go back to the body of Garion. And see if we can find this letter that Imowen mentioned being on his corpse. That might work. Alright, wait, a belt? Okay, so we have a belt, a letter, a small dagger. Go ahead and take this gear. I don't know what this belt is. Anyway. Uh, the letter reads, My friend Garion, please forgive the abruptness with which I now write, but time is short and there is much to be done. What we have long feared may soon come to pass, though not in the manner foretold, and certainly not in the proper time frame. As we both know, forecasting these events have proved increasingly difficult, leaving little option other than a leap of faith. We have done what we can for those in thy care, but the time draws near when we must step back and let matters take what course they will. We have, perhaps, been a touch too sheltering at, to this point. Despite my desire to remain neutral in this matter, I could not, in good conscience, let events proceed without some measure of warning. The other side will move very soon, and I urge thee to leave Candlekeep this very night, if possible. The darkness may seem equally threatening, but a moving target is much harder to hit, regardless of how sparse the cover. A fighting chance is all that can be asked for at this point. Should anything go awry, do not hesitate to seek aid from travelers along the way. I do not need to remind you that it is a dangerous land, even without our current concerns, and a party is stronger than an individual in all respects. Should additional assistance be required, I understand that Jahira and Khalid are currently at the Friendly Arm Inn. They know little of what has passed, but they are ever thy friends, and will no doubt help thee however they can. They can. Luck be with us all. I'm getting too old for this E. E, of course, is Elminster, which if you've, if you've read Ed Greenwood's book, Ed Greenwood's books, you would know, is the old quintessential wizard of the Forgotten Realms universe who goes on all sorts of crazy adventures. That might well, work. the belts, we don't know what it does, and the minions that Gorion dispatched seem to have dropped their gear here. With very little equipment of our own, we will take advantage of this fact and gather what we can. Is that a long bow or a short bow? Short bow. Imowen. All right, so we have Imowen, our thief. Thieves are an interesting class. Thief is a class that the higher level you get, eh, you don't really get a whole lot for it. Those early levels are pretty good, though. Getting the ability to open chests, find locks, sorry, <laughs> open locks, find traps, and other things like that are invaluable in the early stages of the game and are still valuable the longer you continue to play. What the heck? So, Imowen, your childhood companion, will be a welcome addition to the party. Considering that everything seems to be pointing us towards the north, to the Friendly Arm Inn, and our Luther character, dazed, unsure of where he is or how he got here, we will head north. To the friendly arm. Oh, destination unreachable. Court, apparently, sure. we need to go east and then north. Here we go. We've been beset upon by a gibberling. Very request, easy prey. But sure. A diseased gibberling, no less. As far as I can tell, the only difference between a diseased gibberling and a gibberling is uh, one drops gold and the other doesn't. It's probably some minor oh, statistical difference, work. but who knows. Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Oh, there, Wanderer. Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. 
It's been nigh unto a ten days since I've seen a soul walking on this road, and I've been without decent conversation since. Traveling nowadays appears to be the domain of either the desperate or the deranged. If thou wouldst pardon my intrusion, may I inquire which pertains to thee? A fair bit desperate, actually. Might I know the way to the friend they arm in? I was told I might find some, uh, friends there. That I would. The inn is but a short distance to the north, and its doors are open to all. I have no doubt that thy friends shall be there, waiting with open arms. My sympathies for any hardships that the road might have inflicted upon thee, though I am certain, everything shall turn out for the best. My, but I have wasted too much of thy time and said too much already. I shall take my leave and wish thee all the best. What the heck? So, again, I'm assuming most of you already know the plot since the game has been out for 20 years. Gratian's ward is a ball spawn, of course, and so... Elminster is taking a very big risk in letting you live. Uh, I'm assuming he's hoping that your character on some level raised by Garion will break free of the lineage of Ball and not bring about an age of chaos and murder. But if he's wrong, well, it's another Ball spawn that's alive. I suppose in some sense they really don't have much of a choice, do they? I mean... Eventually, all the ball spawn except for one are going to die anyway. Not sure why the sound on that was so buggy. Request, but sure. Well, we found our place at the Friendly Arm Inn. Perhaps we should have a chat with one of the guards. See if there's anything we should know. I should have joined the army. Welcome to the friendly arm in. I trust you know the rules of conduct within. There are rules? What kind of rules? Perhaps rules is a touch too formal. It is unwritten but accepted that while herein you will act with the utmost of civility to all our other guests. This is neutral ground, and all grievances are left at the gates. If the grievances come in, then you will go out. Enjoy your stay. Alright, well, no Not picking fights. Request, but sure. So we need to head to the inn, I would assume, a friendly arm inn to uh, bump into Garion's old friends. Unfortunately, we may be a bit waylaid here. Hi, friend. I've not seen you here before today. What brings you to the Friendly Arm Inn? I'm here to meet some friends. Oh, you must be whom I am to meet then. I uh, will take you to your friends, but first I should be sure you are the correct person. Is your name Luther of Gladstone? Why, yes, it is. Perfect. You are indeed the person I seek. Hold a moment still, won't you? Alright, well, as we all know, Tarnesh here is a little bit of a tough cookie right off the bat. Frustratingly, he casts Mirror Image, which is just a frustrating spell to deal with early on in the game. Unfortunately, we weren't able to, uh... Holy mackerel! What the what? <laughs> what happened? I... <laughs> I was planning on actually having to fight, but... Okay, so what happened there? Tarnesh got his uh, magic... Uh, sorry, mirror image spell off. Which, if you don't know, mirror image creates about four to five images of the wizard. And then every time somebody attacks or hits the wizard, etc., etc., the game rolls a die. And if the incorrect target is hit like so if the wizard has four extra mirror images five count counting himself the game would roll a d5 and then figure out which one you hit if you hit the wrong one one of the images disappears if you hit the right one well it deals damage you can interrupt spells in Baldur's gate if you manage to hit the wizard or cleric or whatever just as they're casting the spell and then there's a chance that they will be disrupted. What actually happened here is we weren't able to do that. 
we didn't get an attack off soon enough, so he was able to cast Mirror Image, and then Luther out of nowhere just rolls a nat 20, crits, not only crits, but hits the non-mirror target, and Tarnesh just exploded, taking 100, or sorry, 22 damage. Um, okay, we'll take it. What the heck? What the heck indeed. Alright, well we don't need his quarter staff, so we'll just leave that there. Scrolls don't do us any good, do they? But we do have another letter. Bounty notice. Be it known to all those of evil intent. Who writes a letter like that? Be it known to all those of evil intent that a bounty has been placed upon the head of Luther of Gladstone, the foster child of Gorion. Wow, this is getting a little too close to Lands of Lore, isn't it? Last seen in the area of Candlekeep, this person is to be qu killed in quick order. Those returning with proof of the deed shall receive no less than 200 coins of gold. As always, any that reveal these plans to the forces of law shall join the target in their fate. Well, what do you know? I don't think there's anything we can do with that letter. It would be cool if we could turn it over to the I forces of law, but I, I'm sure. not aware of any way to do so. An unexpected request, but hey, sure. Hey, friend. Good to meet a fine sod such as yourself. I can't see it. Can't stand the way the roads are cut off these days. Me uncle's in Baldur's Gate, and I can't get there to see him. Uh, well, what does your uncle do? He's a mage, and a crotchety old one at that. Goes by the name of Ragefest. Though as kids, we always called him Grumpleskin. Ha <laughs> ha If he ever caught us at it, he'd cast Barkskin on us so we'd wander around all brown-skinned and green-haired and funny-looking for a few hours. <laughs> An unexpected what a waste of a Barkskin sure. spell. That's pretty petty. Alright, well we finally found Khalid and Jahira. How long must we wait here? Things stir to the south as we sit. Greetings. You... you look familiar. Though it's not your looks, I'm not sure what I expected. But I believe you're a grind's child. I am Jahira, and this is Kali. Good, good, good to know you. We are old friends of your adopted father. He's not with you? I must assume the worst. He would not permit his only child to wander without accompaniment. If he passed, we share your loss. Garion often said that he worried for your safety, even at the expense of his own. He also wished that Khalid and I would become your guardians, if he should ever meet an untimely end. However, you are much older now, and the choice of your companion should be your own. We could t t t t travel with you until you got settled, and help you find your lot in life. It would be a fitting service for Garion, though we should go first to Nashkel. Khalid and I look into local concerns, and there are rumors of strange things happening in the mines. No doubt you have heard of the iron shortage? You would do well to help us. It affects everyone, including you. We are to meet the mayor of the town, Baron Gaskill. Your company would be welcome. Well, good. We'll leave as soon as you're ready, though it should be soon. Alright, well, we picked up Khalid and Jahira. If you wish, but, uh, I am so used to putting Khalid up in the front. Actually, yeah, what does Luther say when we stick him You're in the front? The politics here seem worse than my curse. <laughs> At any rate, Jahira is our fighter druid, and uh, Khalid himself is a fighter, not by any respects a bad fighter statistically, although he is low on strength. He makes up for it with his high dex and constitution. Uh, Jahira... A very solid choice as far as a multi-class goes, a fighter druid, unfortunately lacking the ability to use anything but stone, or rather wooden weapons, so we're limited to clubs and things like that. Actually, I think it's just pretty much clubs. Also a very high constitution, uh, and similar stats to Khalid in many respects, except just with a higher wisdom and a bit more charisma. In fact, we probably should put her up front when we shop. Unless it comes to Imowen, who has one point higher even in charisma. Imowen is a character with a very low strength, but an insane amount of dex. Also very high con, although, uh, yeah, without... So your con does... I didn't go into this in the character creation, but con actually doesn't help you 
if you're a non-fighting class, so uh, beyond 16. So the fact that Imowen is only at con 16 is actually the same, I believe. <sighs> I should probably, I should probably make sure I'm not just spouting nonsense. One moment. Yeah, okay. So I was correct. Uh, only warrior classes benefit from having a constitution above 16, which means that she essentially has the best constitution she can have for her class. Khalid and Jahira would have benefited from another point in Constitution, but 17 is fine. They get a plus 3 on every level up. Imoen's going to get plus 2, and we are gaining plus 4. Which is why you see the difference here between 14 HP and 13. And Jahira only has the 12, likely because of her dual class into Druid, which has a lower HP hit die, I'm sure. Now, we didn't go into the full details of the difficulty that we have set up right now we did show of course that we're playing on hard mode now hard mode if i can get the toolbar to here we go all opponents deal 50 percent more damage against the party there's a little bit more to it than that there's a more monsters and uh more difficult versions of the monsters i believe that being said we also have the max HP on level up checked, which means every time we level up, we're going to get the maximum amount of HP. No dice rolling, no anything like that. Again, it's very similar to the scroll writing uh, mechanic that we went into in the last episode, if you watched it all the way through. The max HP on level up just removes the need to constantly load your game when you level up, because... If you gain a level and you roll really low and you only gain like one HP and you're like, eh, that sucked, um, you're more than likely just going to keep loading until you get a decent number. So this just kind of speed things up. That's why we put it on hard to kind of offset the fact that we're also getting gaining max HP on level up. What the heck? All right, let's talk to Bentley Mirrorshade here, the owner of friendly arm in see what he knows none too many travelers have been through lately what with this tr supposed travels down south so what can i do for you uh what do you have to sell me he is just a shopkeeper essentially offering a place to sleep in addition to a fair amount of well usable gear we'll go ahead and sell the meager gear that we have already picked up and take an eye at plate mail. That is way too expensive. What the heck is Buckley's Buckler? A rectangle of mammoth hide forms this small shield. No amount of cleansing can dispel the pong of decay from this poorly tanned device, yet somehow the melodorious shield fortifies its wielder. It It's a shield that increases your con by one. Interesting. Well, we don't want that. Plate mail will definitely be a welcome thing, although 900 gold puts it far outside of our reach. We'll go ahead and pick up some arrows for MON. Some arrows for Khalid. Khalid will go ahead and purchase a longbow. If this guy sells them. Ah, here we go. Longbow. 112! Mother of Pearl. Okay. Composite longbow. Even more. Alright, just kidding. Luther's gonna buy a composite longbow and some arrows, and everyone else is just gonna have to suck it. Because <laughs> we don't have enough money. Alright, that's fine. Composite longbow. We'll give the short, goat, short bow to Khalid. Uh, last but not least, we need to pick up a sling for Jahira. Oh, who behaved themselves. Here we are, sling. An appropriate amount of bullets. Now, you saw I only bought 80 arrows for our bow-wielding characters, and that's because we'll pick up a lot of arrows along the way. Fortunately, stones don't function the same we really won't find very many so we'll have to acquire the bulk of our stones for the sling largely sure. through purchase 
Well, without much else left to do here, we shall, um, well, we can bop upstairs and pick up a quest. Why not? We have no need to thieve about. An unexpected request, but sure. So we have no real need to check these rooms. An unexpected request, but sure. A pleasure it is to meet you. Hey, I've got a tiny bit of spider infestation happening in my cellars in Berghost. I was on my way to the gate to get some poison, but this would be a lot easier on my legs, to be honest. You'll know the house when you see it. It's right on the west, right to the west of the Jovial Juggler Inn. Bring back their bodies to prove you've done the job, and I'll give you a hundred gold pieces. If you could, please bring back my husband old boots, husband's old boots, and my old bottle of wine back as well, and I'll throw in something extra. Well, what the heck? all right then. hundred gold pieces for the bodies and a little something extra? Sounds good to us. That might work. To the east of the jovial jit, uh, sorry, the jovial juggler, the I believe she said. Let me see. Yes, oh, oh, yeah, and to the west of the jovial you. juggler. My apologies. What the heck? Well, unfortunately, the friendly arm inn really doesn't have much interest other than the inn itself. We can drop over here into this somewhat difficult to find door. And be and heroes of the land and take on this quest from Joya. Eh? There you're new here, aren't you? Could I trouble you for a moment? Tell me, uh, certainly, my lady. Speak your mind. Such manners. Well, I need a gruff hand for this task, so keep your please and thank you, garbage, for the nobles. I was robbed blind by some hobgoblins within the sight of this very inn's walls, and I need you to return the favor. They took my ring, and that's all I want back. Will you do it? I will help you. I thank you. The creatures were just north of the inn. I swear, I could almost see them from the upper rooms. Bring back my ring when you get it. You'll know it when you see it. It's a flame dance ring and very striking. And now, fair enough, request, lady. But sure, that might work. A band of hobgoblins within a stone's throw of the inn itself. Creatures. All oh, right. Whoops. I played my hand. Well, they're hobgoblins. So we'll come up here and dispatch the foul beasts. Eventually. Oh, Imowen, get out! Get out of the back! What are you doing, Imowen? That might work. Actually, I totally forgot Imowen doesn't start out with armor. We found some leather armor and earlier, and I just left it sitting. Sure. Oh, Jahira, what? Are you a mad woman? You're only wearing leather. But sure. I will have to fix that as well. Anyway. Alright, we'll swap our two frontline fighters to their melee weapons and have the two ladies stay in the back pelting people with uh, their ranged attacks. <laughs> oh, Luther. That might work. Hey! Well, we needed armor and gear. We found armor and gear. Let's take a quick gander here sure. and see if we can outfit the party a little better. Leather armor goes to Imowen. That'll drop her AC down from 6 to 4. That's something. We need a helmet. That'll prevent critical hits from affecting us, as well as Jahira. Wearing a helmet makes sense. Now, this is a bastard sword. Is Kali proficient in bastard swords at all? No, he's a long sword wielder just like us. So these bastard swords will only serve to be backups should our normal swords break. We did find a old gem, but nothing that is of the flame dance variety. What so unfortunately, heck? we'll have to continue to travel forward. An unexpected request, but sure. What the heck? The rest of those hobgoblins must be around here somewhere. Luther is taking points since he has the best armor, what with his chain mail and a negative one AC. An unexpected request. Another sure. group of Jim Cummings bots. I mean, uh, uh, Hobgoblins. Definitely not the voice actor of Jim Cummings. 
Uh, sorry, the the voice actor Jim Cummings. So the name of the game early on is just typically have somebody with good armor class draw the attention of all the early game monsters. There is not much of a threat that you'll run into, assuming that you just have decent AC for the early parts of the game. Negative one, Khalid is a little high at one, but anything in the negatives is going to be more than enough to keep you safe while you're fighting these early game monsters. Now, I thought there was... Oh, yes. Okay, so this is... This is a very, very, very convenient thing they added in Enhanced Edition, and I can't even be mad that it's here. There is a quick loot option, which lets you just scoop things up off the ground. No more having to click on each little body and pick up gear and... Yeah, I know, it's not traditional, but I don't care because it makes the game so much more convenient. What the heck? Anyway, we found that Flame Dance Ring, Joya's Flame Dance Ring, so we'll go ahead and take that back to her. That might work. Something I do miss is that now when you go into the inventory screen, the game pauses, as you see right there. I rather liked in organizing my inventory while my characters were walking around. I understand they did that because there's a lot to manage in the game, and in the original inception of Baldur's Gate, the game did not pause while you were in the inventory screen, so if you needed to do any quick management, well, you better be actually quick because the battle's going to continue on while you're looking at that screen. Again, they took that away because you are managing a party of six people, and it's a little unfair to ask somebody to so quickly micromanage inventory what space while you're, you know, trying to fight. Six people's inventory space is a little unfair to expect. So they did add the pausing in Baldur's Gate 2, which then, of course, transferred to Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, which is why we have it here, but what have you. An unexpected request, yes. but sure. Yeah, I thank you. This ring was a gift when I set out on my own. I couldn't bear the thought of some smelly old hobgoblin having it. You're a good sort, and I'll say so to anyone that asks. Alright, so for finishing that quest, we get 400 EXP, and our reputation is increased by one. One of the earliest bits of the game that allows you to manipulate your reputation uh, by moving it higher. Of course, lowering your reputation is always an easy thing. You just need to find an innocent slaughter, but... What have you. We've successfully completed a uh, low-level quest, dispatched some goblins, and brought an, an old woman request, back her sure. ring. Hello, pal. Oh boy, who's this guy? If you don't mind, please try to keep your voices down. There be beasties about with better hearing than we. What should I be wary of in this area? Round here? I wouldn't worry yourself too much, unless you're brainless and charge everything you see. Mostly gibberlings, but they aren't too much of a hassle. A fair bow and a good sword arm could handle one, maybe two. More than with a mage or cleric backup. Wolves have become a bit more predatory lately. I think it's because more people are hunting for their food, seeing as how the iron shortage took away their normal livelihoods. A hungry wolf is a nasty thing, and I wouldn't travel without a group if I were you. Batman well, work. luckily we have a group, so I think we're covered. Sticking to the path should generally keep us safe. And we're back to about the point where we met Elminster. An unexpected request. Oh, what's sure. Done had enough of this. Make sure that the ranged sure. fighters are further in the back here. That might work. Rather uneventful trip so far, Bergos to the south. Our ultimate goal, of course, is Nashkel at the request of Khalid and Jahira. Hey! Mustache to Baragost, I must. Governor Keldath must be told of the extra troops being sent his way. Bergost is to be garrisoned in case of Omnian attack, though Om has denied such intent. Of course they would deny it, the snakes. Make way for the messenger. What the heck? Alright, so apparently Om wants to invade Baragost. You funny 
look in. Don't you be getting any closer, or I'll have Mom come and give you the belt. Relax, kid. I don't want to hurt you. Oh, sure. That's what the other group of bandits said. And then they went off and attacked a caravan I saw just leave. They were a bunch of liars. Probably just like you. Get lost. What the heck? Oh. Well, that's no good. It does appear that a caravan was indeed attacked. Doesn't even look like that much was left, so it must have been raided. Seven gold in a box. Must have been raided by the bandits. Probably spurred on by the troubles that everyone has been going through lately. Need directions? You seem to be a friendly sort, so I thought I'd offer my services as a guide. What do you need in the tower, uh, town of Bergost? Certainly. If you could direct me to an affordable inn, I would much appreciate it. We have many inns for the frugal adventure. Red Sheaf has basic rooms, though the clientele is a touch rowdy. There's also the Burning Wizard and the Jovial Juggler. Ah, the Jovial Juggler. That's the one we're looking for. Which also have finer suites. The Red Sheaf is near the center of town, as is the Burning Wizard. The Jovial Juggler is a bit further along and sits on the southern edge of the city. And thanks for your help. No problem, friend. Enjoy your stay. An unexpected request, but sure. All right, well, that's where we're going to end the first episode, of course, of the Good Luther playthrough. We're just kind of slogging through some of the early stuff that everyone has done a thousand times, so nothing amazing happening yet, but... The more you play, the more complicated the game gets, and we'll get into the good stuff. Spells, equipment, all sorts of fun things to be done. If you didn't know, if you happen to stumble upon this episode and feel like maybe you're like missing something, there was an episode prior to this one where we went into detail explaining uh, what happened, or rather what inspired this Let's Play, where we're coming from, etc, etc. And keep in mind that that video is the same for both the evil run and the good run. So if you've watched that video, it's like a tree. You've got the original video, and then you've got good run and evil run. And they both branch out from that video and go on forward. At any rate, thank you for watching another Please Insert CD Let's Play. I had a lot of fun playing. I hope you enjoy watching to some degree as we travel forward and uh, look for the more interesting bits of the game. Uh, stay safe out there, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.